I think it's great to be here today with you. I'm glad you're in the studio. Uh, this talk with Mike and Tom, and uh, hey, what better time to listen to two old professors talk about the latest and greatest. And by the way, Tom, what, what do they know, these old professors? Well, they know that we're sitting on First Avenue uptown Columbus in the Rothschild building up high up on the third floor, and this is CMG, Columbus Media Group, Columbus Podcasting. So... You went. Well, they know that, and that's good. That's that's one of the things they need to know, right? And then the second just thing happy is, to be here. yeah. And then the second thing is, you just went to see the Joker yes. with Joaquin Phoenix, right? Yes, I've been traumatized uh, once again, and um, by movies or art and other things. And uh, I really, I got, I got to say, what a great movie in so many ways but also a scary movie, a movie that puts you on, not not in terms of the scary movie genre, but one that scares you as a human being to, to reevaluate and take a look at what, the, uh, I guess the word is evil, but it, it really is something to do with mental health in a lot of ways. It tells a story that you didn't really know. It takes it from, as you said earlier, uh, the perspective of, of the Joker and how yeah. it developed, what was his backstory? I found that fascinating. Well, first you had the uh, Heath Ledger Joker, who was supposed to be the definitive, over the top, uh, uh, revisionist yes. that's Joker. R- that's right. And how could that's anybody? Right. But how could anybody best that or whatever? But uh, really, in this case, uh, Joaquin Phoenix went in a totally different direction. There was more realism in a way oh yes. as far as yes. bringing in the mental health element yeah i think i think yeah that's a good point because i think in the past the some of the movies maybe there's some outliers out there but most of the movies sort of kept to this um, uh, fictional character uh uh, group of people that we grew up with through reading the comics um yeah. through um kind of following that story and there's a lightness to it because the bad guy always got their due and the good guys won and batman and robin came out on top and if you have that as a sort of the basis over time that that's how you think about it then all of a sudden there's some real dark realism that came out in this movie well you had the iconic 60s joker and that was cesar romero and he played him very much the same way as he was in the comic books. Right, he was right. clownish. He was outlandish. He he was yes. violent, but but in a way entertaining sort of way. It wasn't scary. It wasn't frightening. And then then the right. Joker moved into. We brought in Jack Nicholson to do the Joker. Oh and, my goodness! And he was yes. the quintessential <laughs> actor's actor, right? And so. Right. Uh, of course, Jack Nicholson can really be over the top, but he, he creates characters that are iconic as well. So he did a Joker that uh, was probably a lot darker than Cesar Romero. And so then yes, they, it's almost a progression <clears throat> darker as this thing, this series and uh, starts to move forward. Uh, yeah, we're do you think the, do you think the whole Batman legend is becoming darker? Well, I, I, I do, um, because I think, for one thing, I think the whole genre is moving that way. I think movies in general really are getting more realistic. I mean, the realism in some of this. And I don't know if you've seen John Wick series, but yeah. there are people being shot in, in the head and those kind of things, which now it's a regular thing. We're yeah. actually seeing, and, and because of the special effects, these these murders, these shootings, these things look authentic. They right. look like they're actually happening. Yeah. They've, got, they've got all of the effects to make it look real from any perspective. Um, so you have to be ready for that. And that may be part of why it's moving to a darker uh, side. But also I think we're getting into the personalities and some of the dark aspects of what can go wrong in a person's life and uh, ha- see how it unfolds uh, through mental illness and through how the environment and the, the community and the uh, uh, Gotham, in this case, really treated him. So it's right. uh, the impact from the environment on the person, but also some of the mental illness from the inside. And when you portray that, 
that can be very, very realistic. It can be very dark at times, too, so you have to be ready for that. Well, some people say that this movie was really disturbing, and it's become sort of a controversial movie on yeah. a lot of levels. Yeah. <clears throat> you have uh, the whole idea of, first, uh, you're showing the the morphing of this individual into a violent individual who becomes the kind of person we're terrified of, unpredictable, scary, violent, that kind of thing. And then there was the the idea that, well, uh, the it was controversial in the sense folks said the movie was derivative. In other words, it wasn't original, and then it was also ambiguous. You, you couldn't really tell what was reality in the movie and 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 what was uh imaginary in other words as this character descends into madness or is he always completely insane well i think you that is a great point about this because there was so much of this uh delusion that was going on for him um <clears throat> And I guess we should say something up front here about uh, maybe spoiler alert right. as we yeah. talk mm -hmm. about this. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's too late for some, but, but um, I don't know when this will air soon, by the way. But uh, so I have to say there's some spoiler alerts because if we're going to talk about it, we have to get into certain aspects that were on screen and, and kind of portray that so that people know what we're talking about. But, yeah, the delusion part of it, of his disorder, it almost seems like his mother was delusional. She got a diagnosis, yep. and she was in the psychiatric hospital. And, therefore, uh, he had this in, in that bloodline. He had the, the uh, dissociative disorder, uh, so to speak. And there are probably a lot of other diagnoses you could throw out there, sociopath and all those. But the, but the idea that um, that delusion portrayed on screen was something that the movie goer yeah. had to deal with yeah. too. Yeah. What is real? What am I watching? I want to know what's happening now and what's happening next and next and so forth. But wait a minute, you're giving me mixed messages that well, I'm watching something that may not be true. So the movie did a great job with that, I think, of drawing us all into that delusionary world. And then you had to question yourself, what is real about yeah. this? Yeah. And and it may have and we probably need Dan Rose in here. Dr. Rose may help us out with this, and we'll ask him. But it may have an impact on us so that we're thinking about what is delusional, what is real, what, what's going on from our own perspective. We'll I'll see, leave that to him, though. Well, see, uh, Dan could do a show, uh, Rose has the Joker or something like that. You know, <laughs> he's got therapy, and uh, he's got the Joker. But, but the, the, you had said earlier you thought it was a, a good film. Yeah, I, I, I think, think so. I so, I I sort of think it's a great film. Okay, and yep. I have seen it a couple of times, uh, and and I've encouraged others to see. First, I don't I don't find it particularly disturbing as much as cathartic. So, uh, catharsis is really a test of uh, Greek tragedy. It was one of the classic. Uh, outcomes of great writing going back to the times yes. of the Greeks. Yes. But here's the other thing. There's so many multiple narratives going on. You mentioned yes. a couple of them. Right, First, right, right. the narrative about delusion. So ultimately, you as the viewer or the audience or really almost a participant in the movie. Yes, I think you're pretty much brought into this movie for you, sure. You, yeah. So suddenly you walk out of the movie and, and you end up uh, doing what a, a friend of mine and I went, and uh, when we walked out of the movie, he was he was so. What happened? I, I mean, <laughs> right, was this right. delusion? Was it real? Uh, how far of it? How far was it delusion? And I I found myself explaining the narrative thread to him. Right. And right, suddenly okay. I realized. Maybe I didn't understand it myself. Well, uh, yeah, I, I struggle with that that whole issue and trying to keep keep up with the timeline. And there were there were really, and I guess we will talk about that. But there's there was this whole narrative that we knew going in. Yeah. Right. So we've all seen the Batman, Robin, Joker, right. um, genres, movies, television, movies, everything, and. Um, part of our lives growing up and yeah those and of us who were back in the day when we read comic books and it was were, pretty uh, faithful to that right i oh, mean the, uh, the, yes. the classic parts of the batman legend were were included 
in yeah, there. Well, yeah, yeah uh, the the um, Thomas Wayne, his father, right. and mother were yep. there, and there was Bruce, little Bruce, little Bruce, Bruce was about ten years old, yep. or something like that. So, uh, but we knew going in there was this all this history. We actually have yep. seen things kind of play out had it in our own psyche going in and we had that to sort of uh, sort of bounce off of and connect with when um, we knew what Batman, Robin's story, Bruce yeah. Wayne, mm-hmm. all the, the manner, the whole thing. Alfred. Alfred. The, <laughs> the butter, Batmobile. Yeah, the the whole bat- thing, we didn't yeah. see any of that. Yeah, we didn't way, see that. Yeah. Well, some, but some. Uh, like you said, and <laughs> confused me when you said it at one point, that um, Batman was sort of in the movie and not in the movie. <laughs> and so, That's right. Yeah. Well, that was actually kind of true in, in some ways. So we had this backstory coming in. Which I found really interesting because uh, we already brought a theme of what we expected into it. Yeah. And whether it challenged our expectations or not by some of this. Because I think that's the realism that came came through. This was a human being. This wasn't some uh, fictional uh, character that they pulled out of the sky. No, this guy had a mother. He had a job. And he did all of these things. And right. And came to this point and it the environment got gotham city was in disarray the garbage on the streets the services were breaking down so we we could kind of identify with some of that which i think was kind of interesting to start with well we had pieces of the narrative coming in and we had those expectations and the history and we also had the history of the multiple great actors who'd played the joker and some of the not so great actors who'd played the joker right and we had this iconic character but what we didn't have, the piece we never had before, was this piece that the movie explored, which is what makes a Joker. Right. How, how did he become right. this iconic character? And even with Heath Ledger, who created yeah. such a, a terrific interpretation of that character and a yes. fun interpretation, scary, all that stuff. All that together, yeah. But at the same time, you you really didn't have a sense of how did that character become that character as much as you did in this movie? You know, Right, and I think one of the things for me, too, was like, okay, I can identify with this guy to a certain extent that he may be real in our society somewhere. There may be someone who has gone through these terrible things, uh, have that killer instinct, uh, too, as well, sorry to say, but also have, has endured the... You know, finding out there've been there they are an orphan. Finding out uh, about their mother. Finding out about what they thought was their father was not. Right. All of those kinds of things were. I kind of thought, well, if this is more than just in Gotham City, this might be real in the world today. <laughs> out there, so that yeah. was kind of strange. Huh? It's very interesting. Well, here's here's the other thing. You know, some of the critics and I read before I went to see the movie. I wasn't that worried about spoilers as much as I just okay. wanted to see uh, what what people were saying. I, I wanted right. to participate in the event along with the rest of the country because it was the talk of the internet for yeah, the, for a yeah, while. Yeah, yeah, and really. one of the big rips on this movie was that, well, you know, uh, it's going for a quick and easy th- easy narrative where here's here's a guy who's downtrodden and he reacts and that's been done before. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure that's really the narrative there anyway, but but even <laughs> right. if it is, I watched the movie, thoroughly enjoyed the movie, and when I came out, this is what struck me more than anything. And right. I watch a lot of films. I go to the movies to watch them. I enjoy the experience like you do. Sure. There and uh, when I walk out, everybody who walked out, the reaction was the same. One person would turn the other to the to whoever they were watching the movie with, and they said they would say something along the lines of, well, what'd you think? Well, I thought it was, and then they began to discuss it. Mm -hmm. Now, Mm -hmm. I can't tell you, (laughs) I can't count the number of movies where that's happened. You know, it's just very, very rare to, to see folks come out and begin immediately discussing the movie in the hall, and as continue as they go out into the parking lot. So there were all these little <laughs> discussions, and I was thinking, boy, I'd really like to hear how that conversation goes. Yes. And to me, that's the mark of a movie oh, that's, uh, that yeah. really touches people. I, I think you're right. I think that is the mark of a great movie, that ones that we uh, are not fully we don't fully understand it, or at least we, we're questioning what uh, parts of the movie. We're questioning the the protagonists, the 
plot points, the the whole theme of the movie, and then our own reaction to it, because there was a lot of emotional content, right. things going on, some violence, yep, horrible violence, horrible in the violence. So you've got to you got to be ready for that for sure. But the notion is <clears throat> that this is, as you said, this is sort of giving us the backstory and the cause. How did this guy develop to become the Joker? So in a sense, the, we've talked about this before we, we started uh, recording, but the the idea that all of these things were sort of themes were coming together, the city was breaking down, right. you had yeah. the rich uh, versus the citizens, yep. you had the, the, the uh, 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 not Bruce Wayne, but Thomas Wayne, the father, yeah. Calling uh, the citizens should get themselves together, pull themselves up by the bootstraps, right. and quit being clowns. Yeah, and that was the headline in the newspaper. Okay. Yeah, and I'm here so, to I'm here to help them do that. I'm here to help them, but I'm calling them clowns. So it 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 it, it was really <laughs> incidentally that's a current discussion in our political narrative, <laughs> our current political narrative in the United States. Everybody's got an answer for you and me, right? Right, right. That, we're, we're just exactly out right. here and. Uh, uh, it, it, I've got amazing. a, I've got a plan. I'm doing this for you. This this kind of thing, and I think perhaps there was some gentle riffing off that with the Thomas Wayne I character. I think it was pretty direct in some ways too. So I apologize <laughs> for be. having the camera on me while I'm looking around, but um, I got caught up in what Tom was saying there for a second. Yeah, and and that you you're absolutely right. It it was current events uh, and connected to just at a at a level where uh, you you could identify with some of that whether you bought into the current political ideas or not but but in this movie yeah the citizens there was an uprising yeah pretty pretty much but at the same time there was something very odd he killed three people three business guys right. on, a, on a train i'm too late for spoilers now right so he kills these three guys this newspaper their uh, headlines they're looking for him right but other people are sort of identifying with that right. He's and a, using that, the the tragedy, to boost the uh, sort of citizenship to rise up and, and uh, start protesting and doing the things that they were doing. Yeah, he's a, he, and he's a vigilante, you know, in other words, yeah, that, that, yeah. People, that people sort of celebrate. But at the same time, most times villi, uh, vigi, what am I, vigilanteism, yes. right, is, is aimed at... Uh, someone who's committed a crime, you know, you're you're the law right. outside the law. Right, right. Well, right. the guys he killed, their crime was was just that they were obnoxious. Right. But <laughs> but they true. were a certain type of obnoxious that was resonating with the with the rest of the community. Right, and, right? and they were working for the Wayne Corporation, which connected them to the top guy who was already in the news for calling people clowns. So right, uh, he didn't do them any favors, by did. the way, in saying these were great guys that worked for me. Right, no, you know, they, yeah, people were right. like, oh, good riddance, right? Well, that that was part part of it, and I think that theme was going on at the same time when um, really he was going through his meltdown, losing his job. Yep. A job that he loved doing, having kids taking advantage of him, beating him up in the alley, yeah. losing his job at the hospital. Uh, and incidentally, you know. he was good at it. Well, yeah. The, the it, scene they, in the hospital, it's clear that he loves it, the kids love him, and his only sin is to make a sort of uh, – a cardinal error that uh, you can't you can't keep your job after you, you make that error. But but That's by, funny. but but at the People same time, people who've seen the movie will know what yeah they'll know what we're talking, about, we're talking about. Oh my goodness! Let me change I, the track here. I have it uh, pretty uh, loose in the uh, production of this uh, <laughs> talk with Mike and Tom today. You see the person laughing, and the other you don't get to see the guy talking. So I'll try to do better. Uh, <laughs> so maybe it's a new it's a new uh, auteur kind of approach where you you're, you're throwing them a Curve. Yeah, me, we're 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 having more fun than we are producing a, a podcast here, but yeah. So, but that was not all. I mean, as he lost his job, he introduced a, a potential girlfriend in yep. the movie, right? And uh, that went on a little while, and of course, that was not delusional at first. 
it seemed like, okay, he could have connected with this girl and acted more like a normal guy, kind of attracted to a girl. The girl was attracted to him. It's, it's, she had a child. They had this thing. And then at one point, um, he's following her uh, to work because he becomes fixated on her. That's a little reason. stalky, wasn't that it? Was, that was the stalking part of yeah. this. But, and this was, if you were really paying attention, Tom, which I was not, you would realize that woman would not have come so graciously to him after she was uh, confronted him about following um, her for her work day. She he followed her on the train and so forth and back, and then confronted him at the door, and he, he admitted that that's what he was doing, uh, and he just wanted to know more about her. And she reacted, "This is a clincher. Oh, that's okay." Uh, well, maybe we can have dinner sometime, blah, blah, blah. Right. No, not in the real world. I, I totally, I bit on that hook, line, and sinker, and uh, I should have known better. But then it really showed you up front right. later in the movie what really happened. Or or did it? Because, okay, because, here we go. Now you're going to start with this. The whole, right, now. As, as I'm walking out, my second time viewing the movie with a friend, and we, and we we did the same thing. He immediately turned to me and he said, so uh, this meant this and that meant that. Right, and right. I started to explain it to him. And then I suddenly said, you know, what if the whole thing was a delusion? What if we're seeing the whole thing from his perspective? None of it happened or none of it happened the way we saw it. And then the narrative became... <laughs> Now we're in the Matrix. That's another movie yeah, we'll have to right, uh, refer to. Well, right. and and maybe I'm referencing that too. But <laughs> but I think a part of that is uh, I've just read this book on neuro linguistic programming. Oh, there you and go. So, NLP. Here we go. You know, you know, uh, the the guy that wrote it, uh, his tact tact is generally about how we all have perceptual filters right right oh. so i'm communicating with you right now but you're bringing an entire backstory an entire history an entire genetic makeup on and on and on yes so what you're hearing may not be what i'm intending you to hear well that is very so, true so when i came out of the movie Shout i out was sort of right there but go ahead <laughs> right i come out of the movie I, and and i'm like the whole NLP thing I'm reading is okay. sort of explodes over me, and and then my brother, you know, it's ten o'clock. I got to go home, but uh, you know, right. my brother's like, "Can't we go have a coffee?" And yeah, you know, about, you drop this, this down. you drop this grenade. But uh, anyway, but but yeah, so it could have been out the whole thing. But I think here's the, I guess this is movie um, uh, producer doing this for helping the audience. By showing right. him scenes with him and the girl out on the street together, mm -hmm. and then showing a scene where he's standing there by himself and there's no one around. Right. Him. So, though so he is, it, that's the clue, and it did that about three, maybe four times. Uh, quick scenes. The right usual the suspects end. approach. Right. You get to see what really happened. You finally get to see that he, there was no one there when he was doing all these little things and eating at restaurant and all that kind of stuff. So from my point of view, and I may be wrong, but the idea that the, that the uh, director wanted us to know, wait a minute, this guy's not just, um, you know, kind of a killer type. Yeah. He's also delusional and he's made up this relationship to sort of comfort himself. And there may be something very important in that. And this is another Dan Rose reference where he could, the, he was doing, um, uh, uh, the be a bad job the best he could I think wait he's doing uh, uh, he's doing his okay I'll leave it at that it was uh, <laughs> sort of he, he's settled with a bad job and he's doing the best he can and that means he is doing that uh, delusional imagine, uh, imaginary character uh, right. and scenes that kind of play out but then at the end he shows up in her apartment this is all the time when those two scenes were going right. on back and forth with him and without it. He shows up at after uh, some murders in her apartment. Yeah. And that seemed to be and the he's real. he's a dark dude, he's, too. He's, he's really, really in a dark place. In a dark place. She is totally scared. What? Who are you? What are you doing in my apartment? Uh, which I found... Uh, Kind of okay. That helped me understand. Wait a minute. This guy's really delusional. He's out there well, making the, up everything. The movie sets you up to ask those questions, though. Even he, he, I get what you're saying about the the director 
sort of lead you in that direction? Yeah, kind of gives us. But then, uh, I mean, I hear your take on it too. Just to, uh, the, just to get back before you say this, <laughs> I, <laughs> you I know, know where I'm going. I know it's coming. I know yeah. it's coming. So that uh, basically, that could have been uh, uh, just a red herring uh, sort of thing too, and left us. Do did he really uh, not? I mean, you know, though. So it gives us a choice of deciding whether that's delusion or not. I kind of thought well okay with all this other stuff going on for this guy he's making up uh you know uh characters to live his life with when they're not when they're not there well i'm going back to another great movie which in a way this is a little reminiscent of and that's the usual suspects where okay. at the end there's the big reveal and oh yeah now i get it but then as you go right. and talk with your friends about the movie you go did we really get it who's True. who's really is there Maybe there is a Kaiser so say, because mm-hmm. the movie, when you walk out, you go, oh, it was all made up. Well, wouldn't that be what Kaiser so say wants you to think is right. that he doesn't <laughs> exist, but you're afraid that he might exist. And that's part of his mystique, right? Well, so, I think, first of all, we're getting hooked into these things. And I, I do think this is done on purpose. The writers, their directors, producers are saying, hey, we're going to yeah. engage this audience and we're going to make them really think. We're going to leave them with a question at the end of these movies and we've got to figure it out. And there, um, Therein lies the questions and the conversations after the movie that you referred to. Well, there's another great film that's that's also, once you've finished the film, you can have five people together and all five of them saw a different film. And that is uh, Once Upon a Time in America, the great Sergio Leone movie. Right. Done uh, about the life of gangsters, right? Right. And so uh, there's this long narrative. And then at the end... When you go out and discuss it, one person will say, well, none of it ever really happened. Somebody else will say, oh, well, this happened. And the famous line was when Sergio Leone was premiering the movie. He was standing across the street because he wanted to hear what the the reaction of right. the audience. Yeah. And as they Alfred came... Alfred Hitchcock used to do that, too, I think. And as the, the audience came out, one person came up to him and asked the question about the big reveal at the end. And he asked him, did you intend it to be this or did you intend it to be that? And Sergio Leone looked at him and he, he sort of said, well, it could be either. Okay. So that was his payoff. And I, and I wonder some, yeah. sometimes, like a great, like a great painter... Or a great poet. Yes, I'm la- I'm laying this out for you, right? It's yours to it, interpret. It's right? yours because you bring you're bringing something, and I think. Sure. That, and again, that's that going back to the whole idea of this movie. I did not expect to see come out and say, "Wow, that was really a great film," and I'm going to have to give that some thought and maybe watch it again. Right. But, uh, right. That's yeah, yeah. that's the very reason because it it so engaged me on so many levels, and I think. Everyone I I meet that has gone to it, I haven't had any. And it's interesting. I haven't had anybody say, "Boy, that was a terrible film." Well, you know, on the internet, you started out earlier by saying you you looked at some of those reviews, and there were some. The first ones I've heard, just, yeah. this is through Twitter and some other places, were that was the worst movie I've ever seen right. in my life. Now I looked at the person, and of course they're like twenty two, and right. you know lots of makeup. So, uh, <laughs> but 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 I, I I got to thinking that this the, if it's a great movie makes you think first of all right makes you kind of really consider it lays it out there for you right it understands that it, you have to interpret it to get the meaning out for yourself and. I, I think at another level it did a, it's something entirely different. It portrayed a personality and a person who uh, had, it, whether you can identify with them or not, had a tragic life, um, had some loving care from a, a, a disturbed mother, was able to get a job, uh, but had all these quirks going on, and then sort of, you know, was was really blown away by all the tragedy and things that happened to them. Yeah, Some they called, some they didn't. But you could identify with it. And one of the things I thought about um, was was really the, the almost uh, hoping that this character m- might pull himself 
out of this. Right. It's like like when uh, he had the problem in the hospital with the kids, they were all laughing. He's having a great time, and then something happened. Right. Right. It was almost a hope, f- from my point of view at that time. Well, maybe they'll just overlook that, and he'll be able to keep his job. Now, right. I know. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right. But uh, they went but to what would have really happened. But why? Why would I even care about that character? Right. right. I mean, it's a movie. I'm just there That's for some right. entertainment and do this. And I'm I'm having these feelings. I'm being drawn into the character. And man, that's that's a good that's a sign of a good movie as well. Maybe even a great movie. Well, and and to to your point about the critics saying, well, that's the worst movie I ever I ever saw. Only a few. You, you, but but that's a reaction. No, right? that's, that's, a, a that's a powerful a, that's a reaction. reaction. I I, I, think, I I just I'd interrupt. Sorry, but I say maybe they just didn't understand. They were looking for something else, and it wasn't what they wanted and expected. And then that that's the only way I can explain. I that. saw two movies years ago that are that are both acknowledged classics now. Right. And I went and I saw them. When I saw the movies, I for both of them, I said those were very powerful movies. Well done, well directed. But wow. That's not a trip. I I don't, I don't, I don't want to go down there. <laughs> and, right. and the movies were Apocalypse Now yes. and Deer Hunter, which you, were two very yeah, different yeah, takes yeah. on the Vietnam War, right? Wow, heavy. But but when you explore the the sort of shadow side of the human persona, I think for a lot of people, and for me at that time, I was a young family man, and I was uh, you know a new father, and I was happy about my career, and I just I didn't want to go. Don't want to go to that, to that space, shadow right? side, and and at the same time, and here's the other thing: I saw Apocalypse Now, and I knew going in that it was a uh, a reinterpretation of a uh, a novel I loved, uh, a Heart of Darkness, right? Okay. But somehow, reading Joseph Conrad, I I got it as literature. I got it as allegory. I got I got all that. Watching. Martin Sheen and Marlon Brando bring it to life. Yes. Absolutely, it was like being hit with a baseball bat for me. And 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 it, years later, I've seen the movies over and over again, going, God, those are great films. Right. But I think at that time of, of life, that yeah. whole dark, uh, you know, that whole exploration of how uh, that's a part of that the human experience, along with the. The bouquets and butterflies flying around too, you know. <laughs> right, right, so yeah, uh, yeah. So and anyway. maybe a mixture of that. And and, and you, I think you're right. I think you're onto something there. I'm not sure everybody's ready for these kind of movies. And sometimes, I think artists take us there to those places yeah. that we're maybe not ready for yeah. in some ways, and make us look at reality in the harsh light yep. uh, of reality. That that when that happens, uh, we're not ready for it, and it. And then we have to adjust and and uh, sort of make sense out of it um, with what we know and our our own reaction to it. Well, it it really uh, kept true to form in some ways with the Batman story. Yeah, that the Joker was born out of that turmoil. Yep. Now we know his own life story. Right. And personality you have a lot issues. more of it, yeah. So you yeah. know that now that yeah. it's going to make this guy even scarier given what he has done. I'm assuming if this thing goes great guns, uh, then we're going to have a next movie it, with this guy. And if you're a superhero fan, so where does this go? What kind of Batman do you end up being the nemesis of this Joker? Because the events that transpire in this movie warp him just as much as the childhood of the Joker warps him, right? Uh, yeah, and I think that there's been some of the uh, earlier movies, and I, I can't think of the uh, this guy that played in Terminator at one point, uh, one of the second ones there. He played a he played a Batman. Uh, sorry, I can't think of his name, but it, it, in some of those movies, maybe yeah. will come to us. But um, it, it showed a little more of the personal side, uh, and it was really sort of the uh, a first venture into knowing more than just that this person has superpowers or he has all these gadgets or whatever it is in the superhero movies, but the more personal side of it. And yeah. so, who is this person? And what are they like, and how do they interact with others, and you know what are their their drives and motives and things like that. Well, in the pulps now, 
the Batman character has been developed as a an almost psychopathic character. They make right. him much more brutal, much more brooding, much more uh, how tenuously is he is he holding on to reality? Remember, he's defining himself as a bat, right? So you right. know, you, you know, uh, that, with all that, all that that brings some to of that. that yeah, mm-hmm. and, and I think all of it's coming coming out. And what what happened to the nice little superhero cartoon like person who um, everything always works out well, and the bad guys get caught and get justice and so forth. And now we're in this brutal reality uh, kind of move. And what is that going to mean for the superheroes? Superheroes have lost their sheen right. off of their costume and outfits. Well, there's uh, a there's an maybe Amazon. That's a good thing. There's an know. Amazon series called The Boys, and it's about superheroes. Oh, and and yeah, those I've those cats are. Yeah. I, I mean, they're rotten to the core. Most of them, you know. And <laughs> and then the their nemesis is also rotten. So it's like a, a rotten meets rotten. But uh, so I think maybe that's an exploration we're having. Because when you think about it, someone who has the hubris to think that all the structures of society aren't saving society's ills or solving the, the problems, but I have the answer. Well, you know, when real life people do that, they turn into megalomaniacs and tyrants and that kind of thing. Right. But we've we've right. uh, sort of given the old Superman legend a pass, haven't we? You yeah, know, I he's just so. a good dude, you know? Well, you know, I think a lot of people have said, where's all of these super... I'm tired of these superhero movies. I, they're everywhere all the time. And I think some people have had that reaction to it as well. Like, okay, yeah. enough with the superheroes. We got it. It's good for the kids. Um, you know, and, and this this occurred to me the other day. I was talking to Dan about this. Um, took, he took his 12-year-old son to see the latest um, Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. And I said, what, another Spider-Man movie? Well, these movies are sort of made for that YA. I don't even think it's a... Uh, right. It's probably pre YA in yeah. in these cases, but they're targeting a certain market with yeah. this. This movie, The Joker, was for the adults in the room, yep. uh, not yep. for the kiddies. And and because it made you think as a human being about humanity, about all of the the the, the uh, ups and downs of of uh, society and the cities and the people who have money and the people who are uh, angry and you know brought all that stuff to light and it's a lot to to take on and and sort of unpack and make sense out of and i think that made that a great movie you said great i think i'm with you on that it it, it was and we haven't even talked about the acting no Uh, and and i think i i think certainly walking phoenix is going to be nominated for this role i mean he he uh, yeah i think so too i mean to first the amount of risk to take on to follow Heath Ledger and to take yes, on up and true. and to also do a shadow side of the Joker kind of violent kind of thing and to have prevailed in this way. So the acting is that's a whole nother show. He he is wonderful in this. Yeah, I mean I I think the, the to bring it to life like he did and portray this mentally ill character with all of the difficulty he had in his life and the environment and the work and the uh, other people around him in his life i mean he was struggling there for a while it seemed yeah to kind of overcome this and kind of work it out and talk with people yeah. and try to make something happen so there was that side of it and as an actor you have to port you can't do this one-sided character you have to have both the dark and the light in this character and portray it in such a way that it's so uh, believable, yeah. if you will. Even though it may turn you away just a little bit, it is believable. And for this guy to get into that, and first of all, he he lost all of this weight. This guy guy looked emaciated. He had a, a, a lifestyle that that uh, you can only guess about. Uh, but to portray this in that way brought that character to life. I mean, this this could have been a character. This could have been a real person out there. Maybe not to the extremes that it, because of the Batman um, uh, environment, but it could have been a person. And that's a scary thing. 
but also a great thing in terms of acting to yeah. be able to portray that. Yeah. And even the first opening scenes where right. he was going through the his face and making those changes right. in his face set things up right. for the rest of the movie. Well, one of the major themes, and and this is uh, throughout the movie, is is the juxtaposition of tragedy with comedy. Yes, I mean he's Here we go. He, you have a a clown who's a, a violent killer. You have a uh, downtrodden human being who sees his entire life as a tragedy, and yet the the end of the movie has a an absolutely almost Chaplin esque comedic right. aspect to it. Yes. I mean, that's the yes. end of the movie. After you've seen, and all it the, had had Charlie Chaplin in the movie. I, you know, there was a scene, right, right, right. So you have this so thing, homage there. Uh, so, so what you have, and then you have the. Uh, one of his tics, which is when he's feeling strong emotions, he laughs. That's what makes the Joker yes. the Joker, one of the things that makes him the Joker. Well, but isn't that sort of an irony that when you're feeling that strong that strong negative emotion, your reaction is to act as if you're in a comedy. And at the end, he comes down on the side of, Life is a comedy. It's not a, my life is not a tragedy. It's just that is wild because to, it, all of the horrible <laughs> things that happen and 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 he just okay it's it's a comedy. He's going to laugh and so it's it uh, the the laugh was probably disturbing to a lot of people yep. because he laughed inappropriately at all of these right. points. Uh, <laughs> right. Listening to the comedian, everybody's laughing at a point, then he starts to tell a joke and he laughs. Then right before the punchline, uh, he he does that throughout the movie with other people. <laughs> yes, he and, does. And um, there's actually Tourette syndrome, by the way. There right. is that disorder, yes. and you right. hear people who come out with curse words. Yep. Uh, just out of the blue. Yep. So there is some reality into what he portrayed with that. Right. I don't think I've ever read about that, the, the inappropriate laughing, but uh, I'm not saying it's not out there. I just don't know. And But it, the Tourette's is something that causes uh, someone to respond automatically regardless of the circumstances and the uh, surrounding uh content and so forth what's going on in the moment and experience. Well, to your point about his acting i think another actor would have just played that laugh as an over-the-top maniacal laugh right with him it's hard, difficult to control but he makes an effort to control to where it almost chokes him i that is just wonderful <laughs> acting to pull pull all those things off yeah. and and That's you know true. every role he does is like that he he finds elements in the role that you that I think a lot of actors either wouldn't go there, wouldn't want to go there, couldn't pull it off if they tried to right. go there. Right, and may be controversial and turn off um, uh, fans because they're going so deep into the character. So that's, yeah. that's another uh, thing that he might uh, you know, give up. But I think what happens in this one that he went so far, it became a really wonderful um, thing to watch. He, he, he was great in it. So the the other thing, and, and I wasn't I, expecting that, by the way. I think the other star of the movie is actually the set design. Right. Uh, <laughs> so, Gotham City has been done so many different ways. You have Tim Burton's Gotham City. You have the '60s Gotham City, but it's never really a realistic, gritty, urban kind of city that you. It may not really exist, but mm -hmm. in your mind it exists when you go to a city. At least a guy like me who's a sort right. of a country mouse from a little town in Georgia, you know, I I go to the big city and I I worry that it's a scary big place right. with <laughs> with uh, tagging everywhere. <laughs> and, I, and, and this Gotham City, I think, was a Gotham City we could see as a, a nightmare New York, right? So, right. And there was so there was nuance in it too. And they talked about the trash on the street. There was no trash, yep. garbage pickup, that kind of thing. Yeah. But it didn't overdo it. It no. was it was just enough that would make it believable. So hats off to the director and producer on and on that. And uh, even even smaller things. Even the riot scenes to that point. Even right. the riot scenes look just like news footage from what we see today. You know. Uh, the tear gas, the uncontrolled, the police who really don't have it have it under control anymore. They've right. lost control. And we've seen that over and over again yeah, yeah. over the last maybe 10 years in the United States where suddenly these 
uh, episodes of civil disturbance kind of pop into well, being yeah, spontaneously. And, th- and, and, and think about the Hong Kong riots that right. are out there and the peop- people going over the police lines and back and forth it, and all it that. It looked that a lot portrayed. like that, by the way. It, yeah, I thought that was really uh, connecting with that in some ways. But but um, So okay. what is the director saying by that? I, I don't. To us as the audience. <laughs> I mean, is it that, hey, this is where you live, This you identify with this, this is an element of reality? Or what? You know, so I, I found myself wondering about I, that. I don't know. I, it, that would be hard to say, and I'm pr- probably sure there's some videos out there of the interviewing mm-hmm. of folks about this because it's going to be one of those movies. There's a lot of videos yeah. out, people yeah. talking about it, and what was in the mind of the producer and director, and what what did they want to happen in the audience? What did they want the audience to take away? But I, I think they left so many things up in the air that it was up to the individual. Like yeah. you said earlier, that was a, that's a great move. Uh, anyway, yeah. that that uh, you leave it with the audience and let them decide, even confuse the audience a little bit. There's some therapies back in the day when we were talking about uh, counseling theories and those kind of things that uh, particular uh, theorists and family systems used to do that uh, and and say some outrageous things or confusing things in the family therapy session. <laughs> right, and people would wonder why is he saying that, and yeah. the answer to that question is he believed in the family being able to take that information and work through it and that, and understand it and make some sense out of that's it. That's very Ericksonian. Yeah, it's it's, it's out a there. very very uh, technical approach, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is in some ways, and so I think the movie uh, directors, producers, the people who put this movie out, and the actors as well. Um, gave that to the audience. It's, yeah. it's sort of a good movie is given to the audience to make sense out of. That's right. Um, I, I think there's a um, there's a problem though. All right, can I bring this up? Yeah. Don, mm-hmm. I don't want to shock you with this, but um, I, I'm looking chronologically at the age of um, Bruce Wayne, right? Who was ten, I suppose, yep. at the mm-hmm. time. Yeah. And the Joker character, who was. 30 something right, in yeah. that mm-hmm. okay yeah. so uh that really means that the joker is much much older than than batman right as they come along i don't know when batman how old he was when he the different ways to look at that but i think there was an age difference there i don't yeah. know i mean maybe maybe joker's in the um Retirement home uh, when <laughs> Batman's at the top of his game. All right, that's all I want to say about that. It's probably nothing to it, but I did notice that. And I you about know, it. you know, as we uh, as we get toward the end of our podcast, I, I think, gosh, I, I hope people go see this movie. I hope if you're listening to this or watching this, you go see the movie. I hope sure. we didn't ruin it for you. I Sorry, think, if we I did. think if we did, we warned you. If if you go into this movie for big reveals and aha and OG whiz no. uh, suspense, I don't think this is that movie. I think this movie is if you're going to the movie to to explore a side of being human that that I think is there. I think that this is the movie for you. So uh, anyway, uh, well, I, some I, of it, I, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think you're yeah. right. Yeah, I hope uh, I hope people go see it. Uh, I think there's uh, a lot more to explore with this character. I really do, well, and I think uh, I want to see the Batman who it who all right, the meets next part. His, all right, so what there I we see. go. You're going to see the sequel or not the sequel? You're going to see the next episode in this in this character. Well, I I think it was a psychological thriller, but let's emphasize psychological yep. more than thriller. Yep. Uh, so uh, very engaging, uh, so many things to take in. I think the, they did a great job all around with this. It held your attention. Yeah. You were not uh, phasing out with this. There was always something happening in the characters. Everything was gritty and, and real and realistic. And so uh, that sets the stage for you to kind of step back and do some self-exploration uh, with this. And I'm... I'm just making a reference to Dr. Rose, what he does all the time. Well, and I think uh, Got Therapy, we need to uh, see Dan versus the Joker. I think we need to see that <laughs> that episode. I oh, think well, he I'd will bring a whole different thing one, yeah. to it, yeah. Yeah, I, I, absolutely, I think so. And he's going to go Freudian on us. He's going to pull out uh, why he's trying to do the best he can with a bad job kind of a, a thing. I'm well, there's, so. there's certainly plenty of Freud here. 
yeah. as well as uh, uh, Jung and uh, multiple yeah, folks. Let's, let's bring yeah. out all the psychologists bring them all that out. we can yeah. and all the theorists out yeah. uh, on this one. It's been uh, it, it's a good experience. I may have to watch it again. I don't know. We'll yeah. see. But, uh, yeah, liked it a lot. I'm glad we had a chance to talk about it today. The Joker on Talk with Mike and Tom. No joke. Yeah, that's right. All right, Tom, I'll see you next time. So long, everybody. 